This is a screenshot of an online GIS thing done by the city of Chicago, and it maps crime by zip code or any other type of um, location filter you want to use. But this provides, if you click on the dots, you can find out what types of crimes happen in this area, um, time of day, what it actually was, what the crime number was this, in terms of booking with the police department. And city um, uh, community groups are using this as a tool for helping improve citizen safety and doing citizen-oriented policing in support of the police operations. And some areas of Chicago have seen a decrease in crime overall after the implementation of this. Many other cities and counties, including Clallam, are in the process of, of doing this as well. You can do GIS analysis in 3D, and this is a map of the city of Dallas. And the green buildings are the ones which the fire department's ladder truck can reach the roof, and the red ones are not. So you can visualize um, issues both in 2D and 3D to answer questions or to present an idea. And the same sort of technology can be used in all sorts of applications. This is a map done of a, a view shed, or basically the areas that can be seen from the top of the Lutheran, Lutheran Seminary, where General Lee spent the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg. It was traditionally thought those lighter areas are the areas that he could actually see from up there. And the analysis of the map, based on historical maps as well as existing topography and trees, could, um, could assess where Lee could actually see. And the darker areas are thought to be areas he couldn't see that were basically out of view, and the lighter areas he could. And basically, he had a much bigger view of the battlefield than previously thought, probably. So it makes it for an interesting aspect, not only for the study of history, but if you're with the National Park Service and doing resource management associated with the Gettysburg National Park. Here's a project my students and I worked on. Here's one map of many. But we were looking at how long does it take for the fire department from rollout of the station to any point in town in terms of responding to an emergencies. And this is a response time model we built of that. We did some other work for them as well and continue to work with the fire departments and law enforcement departments in um, providing them information like this that helps their mission and also provides students with real world experience. GIS is real common in health. This is a map of um, distribution of radioactive fallout from the Nevada weapons testing. And basically the pattern, you can use it in terms of preemptive health and assessing populations that might uh, be prone to cancer at a given point in time. And it's also um, could be used for planning future projects, I guess you might say, that, uh, that could have atmospheric influences and thus influence a whole lot of people beyond the areas in which they, it is being um, actually attempted. More commonly, GIS is used to map and try to predict the spread of of outbreaks of various things. This is a map of the SARS outbreak in Hong Kong over a period of 16 weeks. And this is a real common use um, in epidemiology and health sciences to try to figure out where and when epidemics might occur. And this is even online now. You can go to whoissick.org and there's none for Clallam County, but you can look over in the Seattle area and see what sorts of things are causing people to go to the hospital or see their doctors. Basically, maps can be used in any situation, whether it's an academic field or a professional application. In terms of a skill, it's definitely essential. In terms of providing the ability to think critically, it's also essential. This is a map that shows the distribution of cholera deaths around pumps in London during cholera outbreak in 1854. And there's a great deal of literature out there on this, and I recommend the, the book The Ghost Map if you're interested in learning more about the specifics of the data associated with this map. But the point of this particular map is that map makers can make a point with the map that you don't necessarily see as, as a um, user of the map. There's a saying in computer science, garbage in, garbage out. In map making, we say garbage in, gospel out, because once it gets on paper, people tend to believe that that's the truth. 
Down on the bottom here is sort of an outline of various neighborhood blocks based on major streets in this area of London. And basically the original map with the original data on it shows an aggregation that's sort of centered around the Broad Street pump. And indeed that happened to be a contaminated pump. But this author pointed out that if you use different boundaries within this neighborhood to aggregate, aggregate the deaths, you can either mimic that particular spread in a block, as you see on the left, if you put the boundary right through the middle, it looks like the deaths are spread evenly throughout the area. And if you put a boundary that includes Broad Street itself, it looks like the, comp uh, the um, main areas of death are actually away from the main pump. So the aggregation, the choices made by the map maker, can influence the final map. Basically, whatever map it is, it has some underlying data. And the map maker has some reason to make the map. And that reason is essentially the same thing that we talk about in writing, a thesis. So it's a visual argument, a visual proposition. And the ubiquitous nature of maps and their ease of use and the fact that essentially anyone can make their own maps now means that in the same way that conventional text can make an argument and influence people, so can maps. So if you're interested in finding out more about GIS, I'd be happy to answer questions, shoot me an email, give me a call, and I'd be happy to help you incorporate it in your classes or your curriculum or any particular applications you might have. Have a good day.